look at this big honking beast. <laughs> We're going to be checking out the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B. And uh, it's, a, it's a big air cooler, but uh, let's see how it does. Hey everyone, Chris with Coalition Gaming here, and we haven't done too many cooler reviews in the past, so it was really awesome when Scythe reached out and wanted to send us a product for review. They sent us the Mugen 5 Revision B Big 6 Heat Pipe Air Cooler, and it's com compatible with every socket as well. So you got 20, all the way up to 2066, so you got the Intel high-end desktop platform supported, as well as 11.5X, AM4, everything is included right in the box. So it's a full-fledged package. You got a really good fan on it as well. That's the Scythe Phase fan, I believe is what it is. And uh, well, let's look into the temperatures. I'm going to be testing this against a Hyper 212. Not really in the same class of cooler, but it's what I have on hand on my test bench. So we'll see how a big air cooler does against what you would call a standard air cooler. So let's go over what the box has. Got this piece on the top, we'll get into that in a second. Got the instructions right here, and then you got your fan, Scythe K's. Did I say K's again? No, I said phase last time. It's K's Flex. I know I got the F's from somewhere. So you got the fan right there. Then let's unpackage the beast. There we go. Look at that thing. That is huge. So this thing is massive but shiny cold plate, solid build quality. It feels great in the hand and probably not too heavy actually for the motherboard. It is still hefty, but you know, air coolers, the good ones are. So this is the Scythe K's fan. It's a 120 millimeter fan. You have the rubber grommets on the sides in order to uh, deal with vibration issues. This is actually a pretty good fan. You won't be getting RGB or anything blingy with this setup, think like Noctua but uh, you do get nicer colors than Noctua, so that is really good. It's a PWM fan, by the way, so that'll be going on your four pin PWM header. And so this is the box with all the miscellaneous stuff, and here we go. This screwdriver is going to come in handy big time, and uh, the length of the screwdriver will let you reach through the screw holes on the top, just like that, to get to the screws that you need to tighten and uh, it's really nice that they include this. I'm actually really happy about that. And then we have the rest of the mounting hardware here. So let's go ahead and take that all out. So Scythe has included a little bit of thermal paste. That's nice. You have your uh, mounting brackets for your different sockets and your back plates as well as your fan clips. And they give you an extra set so you can do push-pull with it. So that's pretty nice. You got everything you need right in here in this package to go from 11.5X to AM4 to 2011 to 2066. Good job, Scythe. This is great. So since my test bench uses socket 2011, the install process was smooth as heck. I love socket 2011 and probably 2066 as well because they already have an integrated backplate, integrated mounting solutions. It's just great. So as a test bench platform makes things like this really easy to test, really easy to swap back and forth. I don't know, <laughs> I really like the socket. With that said, socket 2011 supports the higher wattage CPUs, higher TDP. So the E5 1620 Xeon that I'm gonna be using is a 130 watt CPU. So that is more on the TDP than most CPUs. I believe the new AM4 CPUs are gonna be around 105 watts. They're 95 watts. You get the non-X uh, Ryzen's, they're 65 watt. You're looking at 95 to 100 plus watts for the Intel CPUs. And while I am aware that like the 9900K and the 8700K can pull more than 130 watts, um, this specific air cooler is built well enough to handle that no problem. But we got a 130 watt processor on that and that's gonna cover the majority of uh, scenarios that most people are gonna be you know, using it with. So let's check it out. So uh, pulling up my cheat sheet on the results there. <laughs> I have them on the screen, but that's behind me. So let me get the screen in front of me. Xeon E5-1620, 130 watt CPU with the Hyper 212 and the Mugen 5. At idle, the Hyper 212 got 34C, Mugen 5 got a 33C. And this was at about 76C ambient in the room, by the way. So at 
idle who cares one degree difference not that big a deal i wasn't expecting to see a huge difference there anyways but prime 95 blend 30 minutes that's my sort of baseline in order to see uh, with an, a torture test how hard a, a cpu will get hit for temperatures so prime 95 blend for 30 minutes hyper 212 got to 72c peak mugen 5 62c that's a 10c improvement on an all-out load that's uh, pretty significant prime 95 small fft 15 minute this test should be a bit more intensive as it tests stuff that most games and most general use on the computer is never really going to hit the processor at anyways though this cooler excelled both coolers actually did pretty good here but again the mugen 5 came out on top 71c peak on the hyper 212 62c on the mugen 5 9c it was better by 9C, so it's still kicking butt. So Apex Legends, let's go with some gaming loads, a little more typical. Gaming doesn't generally hit a CPU as hard, so we're not gonna see some high CPU, no, uh, high CPU temperature numbers here, but let's go over them anyways. Hyper 212 in a match of Apex Legends, 58C, and then the Mugen 5, 56C. So like I said, the difference is gonna be a little less on this because uh, CPU in gaming isn't stressed all that hard. Some games do, some games don't. Apex, not so much. But Battlefield 5, on the other hand, the Hyper 212 got 64C and the Mugen 5, 60C. So it was hotter and the, the difference it widened. So that gap widened with the Mugen 5 obviously coming out on top. It's twice the size of the Hyper 212, probably with a better fan. So it's definitely going to beat it everywhere. And I have a feeling that the maximum capability of this cooler, we didn't even come anywhere near it. The fact that they include extra stuff for you to put on another fan so you have push-pull configuration with it will also raise the maximum cooling capability of it. So it's actually just uh, this testing that I'm doing isn't pushing it as hard as it, as, it, uh, as it needs to go in order for you guys to see how much it can handle. But this is what I have on hand, 130 watt CPU. The fact that it's doing this well on a 130 watt CPU means that the majority of you will be good to go for overclocking or anything with this cooler. So this big cooler definitely has a lot of capability to it. The fact that you can adapt it for any socket with the included stuff also means that it's pretty flexible as well. The value it brings to the table at $47.99 right now on Amazon is actually pretty insane. It's a six heat pipe cooler. It's a bit on the big and heavy side, but you won't really have any issues with RAM clearance. It stays way above the RAM, at least on my test bench and i didn't see any issues with clearance or anything like that when installing it since the installation process was smooth uh there is really no negatives here it's also really cool that they give you the screwdriver to install it you got the long screwdriver to reach through the holes to screw everything down that's really cool and it cools like a beast so for any cpu usage that you guys are thinking for this one this cooler is definitely capable i do recommend it and at 47.99 it's actually hard not to recommend it so definitely check it out link will be in the description below so because at 47.99 this thing is such a value and has such good cooling capability you may be asking yourself do you even need to water cool when it comes to something like this aios have gotten cheap and aios are definitely strong and and all that and uh, well, a thing with the AIO is that once they go bad, obviously you have to replace it. There really isn't fixing an AIO when the pump goes bad. With an air cooler, really there are no moving parts. So the only thing that can go bad is a fan, but then you just change the fan and your cooler is still there and working and everything. Just change the fan. It's not a big deal at all, but 50 bucks for this thing versus maybe 85 to $100 for a 240 mil cooler. It's a toss up. Uh, you're gonna wanna pick something that's gonna fit your usage for your computer. If you're gonna be moving your computer around a lot, you have LAN parties that you go to or anything like that, big heavy cooler hanging off your motherboard may not be the greatest idea and that's when water cooling is a great option. But if you're just looking for no maintenance performance that you don't have to worry about and it's gonna cool very well, this cooler really has it, especially at the price point. So I hope you guys found all this information helpful. Hope you found this review helpful. Click that thumbs up button. Uh, click that thumbs up button. Uh, uh, what the hell? Click that thumbs up button if you did. 
and subscribe. We always have more coming. Make sure to join our Discord. We got a lot of stuff going on there. Come talk tech with us. Come talk OBS, NDI, any of that cool stuff that our other content is about. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're always open to interacting with you guys. Drop a comment down below telling us what your favorite air cooler is. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. You know what? Let's do this. Let's try this. I'm going to read the top comment from our most previous video. Bird77 underscore D said, actually doing a 4770K build as my stream rig. 1060 Strix 6 gig GPU paired with, uh, paired with it. Thanks for the tips. Wanted to only use my 8700K for gaming. Thanks for the tutorial. That comment is on our OBS NDI tutorial. This guy definitely liked the tutorial. So thank you for stopping by, checking it out and dropping a comment. I really appreciate it. If you guys want your comment read, drop something down below. We'll see you in the next one.